Hi, I'm Sheila. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Jamie, and we're from the ODC Network. And we are out exploring spring wildflowers today. It's a great time of the year to go out and see what wildflowers are growing in the forests around your house. Trees don't have leaves on them, which gives all the sunlight and moisture that those plants need to survive and reproduce before they get full of leaves. So let's go see what kind of spring wildflowers we can find in our forests. Let's go. That one there is called large flowered bellwort. Now you can see it's still very much um, just a, a closed up. So another probably two weeks and it has um, leaves that clasp the stem and it's very droopy looking. It always looks like it's wilting, but that's just how it looks. Looks like there's about five of them right here. Yeah, there's several of them here. There you go. I see a bunch of them. And then what, what's that other one, Jen, we talked about too? Oh, this is a cool one called blue cohash. Cohash is actually a plant that was a um, native medicinal plant. It was something that at, um, I believe the seeds were ground up to make coffee or something like that, but it also can be toxic. So before you try this at home, don't go and find blue cohosh. But there you go, we've got some blue cohosh there. Uh, it, it has a flower on it that is yellow, but then, or yellow to white, and then the, the, the seeds, the, the fruits are blue. So, it's got these really interesting red stems on it. Oh yeah, they're very, yeah, like purpley. I would have called that purple, Jen, but I, yeah. I don't disagree with you. There you go, cool. So there you go, and it, it actually, in my opinion, the leaves look a lot like a columbine-like yes. leaf. Yes, And it'll grow like almost two feet tall. So this is just early on. All right, Jen, let's go over there where we saw another couple of plants. All right, we have, this is giant white trillium, trillium grandiflorum, white trillium. There's, there's a bunch yeah. of different names for it. Common trillium. Common trillium, trillium, yep. It's the one we see the most often. Yep. Now you were just saying something about in your yard, how you have some and it's looked oh, yeah. like this for- It's looked exactly like this for approximately two weeks. Yeah, okay. It's got a nice big bud. I'm like, oh, any minute now. Yep. Any minute now. Any minute now, <laughs> and it's been two weeks. I'm like, it's beautiful. I hope nothing eats it in the meantime. Right. This is like deer candy too. So oh, yeah. this is one of those plants that's heavily affected by over browsing of deer. So it's really good to see here at the park that there are some trillium flowering. It's got three leaves, but these leaves are shaped differently. They're much more like fat. Uh, and then if you look at the flower here too, this one is in the trillium family. It's different than uh, just the great white trillium. This is called drooping trillium. Gotta get it right. Uh, there is a species called nodding trillium, which is very similar to this one. Uh, the nodding trillium has a longer stem right here attached to the flower. The flower will droop underneath the leaves. Uh, and then if you look here too at these stamens, where the pollen would be, the stamens are twice as long as the little filaments that they're on. And so that's a way to tell them apart. But it's a really beautiful flower. You can see it's got three petals, three sepals, three leaves, hence the name Trillium. Oh, what were we just talking about, Jen, a moment ago? Um, what was I saying about its dormancy? Double dormancy. So it has to sleep through two winters before it will sprout up and just make leaves. Yeah. And so like seven to 10 years it could take for that flower to uh, grow. So it's, if you see a Trillium, no, that's uh, one that's been working for a long time. So here is a whole bunch of the same kind of plants. They've got these big leaves that have five different lobes on them. And then if we look over here, we've got the beautiful flower that's blooming. This is wild geranium. It's got five petals. They are pink uh, as opposed to the um, spring beauties white with pink veins. But these ones are just pink. They've also got a lot of stamens in there. I think 10 to 12 stamens, little pollen places. Uh, these ones, when the, I think these are blooms right here. 
So after they're pollinated and grow their seeds, the seeds will actually uh, disperse not by animals, but um, they'll get shot out from the plant. And so they're dispersed by just basically explosions. So it's pretty nice for that plant there. All right. We have a couple more wild geraniums here, you can see. They've got uh, a little bit of variation in the flowers. They can be like almost all purpley pink like this one here, to kind of like pink on the ends and then more white on the inside there. Uh, all of these lines in the flower that you can see, if you can come a little closer, all of those lines on that flower, they're actually basically like neon signs for the pollinators, showing them where the pollen is. So in ultraviolet lights, they might glow. So the lines there, it's pretty cool. With my eyes. Oh, there you go. Yellow. The sky is just starting to bloom here. This is one of my favorite wildflowers. This is trout lily, and there's a lot, a lot of debate about how it got the name trout lily. Uh, the story I like is that the naturalist that came along saw these interesting leaves and thought it looked like a speckled trout. Um, they don't look like trout that I've ever seen, <laughs> but it's a fun name and it's easy to remember. But this is another one of those plants that's got like 10 or 15 it common does. names. It does. Everybody calls this plant something different. Oh, here's another bucket. Oh, yeah. Here. So what are the names that you know, Jen? Um, let's see. I've also heard it called um, Yellow Lily. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I've heard Trout I Lily. Adder's tongue. Adder's tongue. Yep. yep. I've also heard dog tooth violet. Yes, I've heard that one. Yep. So a couple of different names. It is part of the lily family. And so <clears throat> something that you uh, look for in West Michigan woods. And actually they're they're going to spread via the rhizomes. So that's why you have these like colonies where you have all of these leaves together, but there's only a handful of them that are actually flowering. That's a colony of, of, of the flowers. They may or may not be connected by the little bulbs under the ground. And this is another one that takes several years to bloom. Yes. Um, they need to have enough energy stored up to actually grow two leaves before they can grow a flower. And they don't flower every year. This one's got a really interesting life cycle in that its primary um, pollinator is actually ants. Ants will come and pollinate it and the ants also come and collect the seeds. Plant makes a special kind of fatty coating on the seeds that the ants like and the ants will take it back into their their colony their nest so they take up the seed underground and they will nibble on that coating the seed coating and then they don't actually like to eat the seed so the seed gets left alone down inside their their burrow and uh, from there it can germinate so it's kind of like they make a little candy for the ants to tease them along to say, take my seeds and transport them for me. So I've been seeing a lot of these flowers as we're walking along. I wanted to show you a good specimen. Uh, you can see the leaves here. They've got lobes like two to three lobes to them they're smooth all the way around the leaf and then if you look at the flowers all of the flowers on this plant have five petals uh, because of that i know this is false rue anemone i'm going to double check that just to make sure <laughs> don't want to give you wrong information um, the rue anemone and wood anemone all have plants that have more than five petals, or sorry, flowers that have more than five petals. But the false rue anemone has just five on the entire plant. So looking at this, they all have five petals, and so I can tell that this one is a false rue anemone. They also don't have any whorled leaves or leaves that are like all the way around the stem. Um, wood anemone has leaves that are serrated on the edges, so they look like they have teeth on the edge. They've got a similar leaf shape, just glancing at it, to a columbine. But the flower obviously is different. It doesn't hang down, it just sits right up. I don't think 
There's some more, is there more trillium coming up? Oh yeah, I do see more trillium. There you go. The dip in the pulpit is very similar. It has three leaves, but it has a different vein pattern on the leaves. But if you look down here, there's those three leaves again. But then, if you look down here, you can see the flower. It's a little bit tricky. This one is uh, Jack in the Pulpit. So it looks like there's a little person inside a pulpit there. That's how it got its name. Uh, this is the flower. It's green, and so it's not really very showy. It's really cool, though. They've got a spathe and a spadix. Uh, that is the spadix inside there, and then the spathe is the covering around it. They can be anywhere from like this pale green color to like a reddish green color as they're growing and maturing. Uh, and the leaf and then uh, the flower all come from a, uh, a structure called the corm underground. And that corm <laughs> uh, is the storage place where uh, as this leaf is gathering sunlight, it can store that food that it makes down in the corm. And then as the years go on, it can use that uh, food to help grow the flowers. So, Jack in the Pulpit. It's a pretty cool flower. It's starting to uh, come up here and there. We saw those little leaves before. It's one of the later spring wildflowers that we can find. So this was a really cool find. All right, let's get across the bridge, Jen. I know there's more on the other side. We step off the trail here a little bit. Just be careful. We got a couple of these flowers blooming here. I'm not sure exactly which species it is, uh, but these are violets. I've seen purple violets and yellow violets out here. They're pretty cool. They've got these heart-shaped leaves that are kind of serrated on the edge. And they've got nice pattern on the inside there showing where the nectar and uh, the pollen are for animals. So what is this plant that we're looking at right here? So this one is... Is this from Dutchman's Breeches or Squirrel Corn? It is Dutchman's Breeches. Okay. So they are both members of a family of plants that any gardeners out there might recognize. Um, they're part of the Bleeding Heart family. So they have a flower that looks very much like a bleeding heart. So we're going to find some blooming. I'm very carefully walking because I look at this as I look down. Just about under my feet. Another couple of trillium and some cohosh. So I'm being very careful to not walk on these things. All right, let's find some that are flowering. As I look out, looking for Dutchman's breeches that are flowering. Oh, here's an early one. So this is like, you know, within a couple of days of it first starting to flower. Look at that little guy down there. We'll find some that are a little bit bigger than that. Oh, there you go. There's a good one there, Jen. This one right here looks like it's just about in full bloom. We've got a couple more little buds on there. So there you go. That looks kind of like that bleeding heart. That flower you might have in your garden. It has the name Dutchman's Breeches because it looks like pants. Pantaloons. Pantaloons. All right, let's find some more. Kind of stack up in rows like that. You'll see multiple flowers along a stem. So that's your typical Dutchman's breeches. Gotta find one. Oh, here's a good one that's close too. This is a couple of days later. There you go. More Dutchman's breeches. Nice looking flower. Cool. There's a bunch along the edge of the trail. Oh, Jen found some more. So there's, oh yeah, if we look out. Sorry for anybody that's watching, I went fast there. Yeah, there's a bunch as we look out. Dutchman's breeches. We're gonna go down just a little ways because I know I found the one that's similar to a Dutchman's breeches. Anybody out there know what the one that is similar to a Dutchman's breeches is? Has a different name. Same family. has to do with an animal that is quite abundant here in the forest. They like to eat nuts from oak trees. It's 
called squirrel corn. So I know I saw some here the other day as I was exploring to see what is out. We're just a couple of feet away from it. All right. So as I get over here, I'm gonna carefully get out to some squirrel corn. Trying to step on as little as possible. It, squirrel corn is a plant that's gonna bloom later than Dutchman's breeches. So by the time that Dutchman's breeches is starting to, to fade away, there's the leaves, then you'll have the squirrel corn flower coming out. So Dutchman's breeches is fading, squirrel corn starts to grow. Very, very similar leaves. To me, they have just a hint, just a hint of a little bit more of like a dusty look to the leaves, but super similar. So here we go, we have Dustman's breeches, leaves, squirrel corn. Well, here's another squirrel corn, Jen. See, it's still a, a easily a week or two behind oh, yeah, the Dutchman's close. britches. Oh, but here's a cool spot where we can actually see the tubers growing under the ground for that plant. See, it looks like little bulbs in the ground. That's how they're going to grow. So, and that is actually a squirrel corn. So we can get right down in there and see that's how they're going to propagate or grow. They're going to spread out. Oh, as I look in this spot, Jen, I see one, two, three, four, five. There's a bunch of squirrel corn in this little, right little, here. little spot here. Right here. Oh yeah, there you go. Just a little guy starting to grow. Cool. Uh, more of the, the, the wart. Warts, yeah. And I can see probably leaves coming up. Yep. And this one looks a little different. Uh, I think that's still a bell wart. I think a it's just a little bit further oh. along. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to find Solomon's seal here, but I haven't seen any yet. I haven't seen any yet. All right, let's go just a touch more. There said You said there were some flowers along the stream. Yep. If we go that way, Down let's go that way. Awesome. Lead the way. So this one here, it's got these little grass-shaped leaves. They're kind of thicker and they've got a single vein going right down that leaf there. Uh, and then when it's sunny out, you can see the flowers. They're closed right now, but when it's sunny, they will actually open. And these flowers have five petals on them. And then if we look inside here, I'll be very gentle. They've got sort of whitish petals, and then they've got these pink veins going down them, maybe. And then if you look very closely inside there, you can see the, the pink stamens. So where the pollen is located, it's pink in there. It's really cool. They're a really delicate, small flower, uh, but there's a lot of them actually growing on this one plant here. So this plant has probably been established for a really long time. They grow back every single year. Uh, they do have seeds that are dispersed by animals, um, like mice or birds that will come by and then disperse the seeds and then they'll grow new plants. Uh, probably within the next year, they're not like the trillium and the trout lily that take many years to bloom and flower. Uh, but they can come back every single year and as you can see there's multiple stalks of flowers coming from that single corm there. Uh, the corm is edible. I would suggest not picking these flowers though because it does take them a long time to grow and bloom. Um, but you could eat them, other animals do too, and it's pretty delicious, I think. So here we go, we've got one more flower that's not flowering. It's called cut leaf toothwort. So there you go, we're, we're still early on for that flower, just like the trillium, just like a lot of the trout lily or a large uh, bellwort, probably a week or two away from seeing any blossoms, but that plant right there is called cut leaf toothwort it has a white flower on it so we just found these today uh, these are really pretty flowers it's in the toothwort family so similar to the cut leaf toothwort uh, they both have four petals on their plant four white petals on their flower I should say uh, but the leaves are very different they're not as deeply lobed 
and they've got these more like fringed edges. And for each of the plants, there's only two leaves attached to them, while the cut-leafed toothwort had three leaves. Uh, toothwort got his name because uh, it was used way back for medicinal purposes for toothaches, so it would help relieve toothache pains. I don't suggest doing that now. I would suggest seeing a doctor and a dentist. They can probably relieve your pain better than plants can. Uh, if you look over here, we've got some of these leaves left over uh, from the Dutchman's breeches that were around here earlier. Uh, all of the Dutchman's breeches flowers have pretty much gone away. Uh, some of the flowers for some of these plants last for a couple of weeks. Others only last for like a week. Some last for only a day or two. We'll see if we can find one of the plants up here that was flowering when we came last time. Uh, but it's no longer flowering. So this one right here, it's got a huge leaf to it. It's really cool, kind of wrinkly leaf. Uh, it's actually pretty thick, stores a lot of water. And then if you look down here, here is the seed the seed heads, not the flower um, buds, but the seed heads. This is bloodroot. When we came here last week, we saw the flower of this plant. The leaf hadn't yet furled out. It was just unraveling and unwrapping from that uh, flower bud. The flower is very beautiful. It's got these um, almost milky textured petals to them, and they're white. There's like eight to 15 petals on the flower and almost as soon as it starts to bloom and open up uh, it will lose its petals right away. It only blooms for about a day or two and then it's done. Um, and so we were lucky that we got a chance to see that. I was hoping that we would see some today but sadly it's all done. So, blood root. Um, if we look just right here there's a couple of these plants that are growing up on the ground here. There's uh, This stuff is all over the ground. Uh, it's a ground cover plant. It's wild leeks or ramps. Actually an edible plant. Tastes kind of like onions. It's in the onion family. It's got these red stems on the bottom here. Um, this is a spring plant. It sends up its leaves in the spring and then its leaves will die off and then in the summer it sends up a flower. So it's actually flowering while it doesn't have any leaves on it. It's kind of cool. Um, in the summertime that's when it starts to flower and then it'll seed out late summer, early fall. Cool. There are so many cool wildflowers out there. Uh, we saw some amazing things. It's so cool to see all the wildflowers in springtime. Yeah. Now, it's a great time of year to see the wildflowers, but if you want to protect the wildflowers in your backyards, there are certain things you can do. The first one is don't pick wildflowers. Let them be where they are. Another thing you can do is to stay on trails and prevent your pets from walking through wildflower habitats. And the last thing you can do is not mow, fertilize, or apply pesticides in areas with wildflowers. Thank you guys so much for coming out virtually with us to see the beautiful wildflowers this spring. Hopefully you get a chance to see some beautiful wildflowers by you. Have fun.
Now let's go outside.